Today we're going to talk about, and I don't even have a title for this because God didn't give me one, but we're going to walk through Anna. I was like, what can I say about a lady who only has three scriptures in the Bible? And then, you know, once you trust the Holy Spirit, he's going to lead you through. So let's go ahead and go to Anna in Luke 2, verse 36 through 38. And I'm going to read it. I'm reading out of the NIV. And I encourage you to go there if you if you can. Um, the way that I teach, I don't want you to take my word for anything. Um, I want you to follow along. I want you to check and make sure I'm saying what is true. Um, and so we're going to Luke 2, verse 36 through 38 in IV. And it says, there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying, coming up to them at the very moment. She, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So what I found fascinating about this scripture is that Anna was the second person to confirm the identity of Jesus in the temple. Um, if you read a few verses up before we get to Anna's part, we know that the first man was was actually Simeon and the Holy Spirit, he had gotten a prophetic word that um, he wasn't going to die until he saw the coming of the Messiah. And so the second person to confirm this story or Jesus's identity on earth was Anna. And we, that lets us know like, that she had a very important role. So let's talk about what we know about Anna, right? Let's low walk through the text. We, what do we know about Anna? We first know that Anna was a prophetess. And we know that prof prophets are people who speak for God, right? They have insight about the future. They are really, they walk really closely with God if they're not running for, from their calling. So we know that Anna by birth was a prophetess. We also know her name. Her name is Anna, which translates to grace. This is significant because, you know, in the Bible, we don't know many women's names, right? Um, the Bible goes silent on a lot of women, but the, the the writers of the text found it necessary to name Anna by name, right? So God saw Anna's identity and role as so significant that he mentioned her in the same way that he sees your role as is so significant in this season. Um, God's not only just, when I was writing this, this is what I, I'm going to read it verbatim, what I heard the Holy Spirit say. The Holy Spirit says that your role is so significant in this season that not only is he telling people about you, but he is ensuring that history will never forget you. I'm going to repeat it. When I was studying, I heard the Holy Spirit say, your role in this season is so significant that he is not only telling people about you, but he is ensuring that history will never forget you. He said, tell my daughters that history will never erase them, just like it couldn't erase Anna. So what God is calling you to do, no matter how small it might seem to you, of course, Anna, she only makes a little cameo. She has three uh, three verses about her. But even though that may seem small, it's huge in the grand scheme of things. So I want to encourage you, whatever, first of all, agree with God quickly. But second of all, don't shrink back, especially in this season, you all, we know that um, we just stepped into the Jewish New Year 5784 last month. And this is um, the year of the open door the year of the up and open door. So don't shrink back when you're standing in front of, and when you're in a season of an open door, right? Um, go ahead, go forward because you have a divine appointment just like Anna did. So how do I know that Anna had a divine appointment? Well, if you skip down to verse 38, it says she came up to them at that very moment. And that's what the NIV says. It says she came up to them and them is Mary and Joseph. She came up to them at that very moment, but the KJV says she came up to them in that instant, which points us to the fact that she was in a destiny moment. You all, we are in a season where we have to live very intentionally, that we have to agree with God and live by divine timelines and timetables. What if Anna would have missed her moment in that instant to go up to confirm Jesus's identity? We wouldn't know about her. Then history would have erased her, right? 
Don't allow whatever you have going on to cheat you out of the destiny moment that you have, okay? We also know that Anna was a daughter. Anna was a daughter. Daughter translates in the um, in the Greek to acceptable to God, right? And it also means rejoicing in God's peculiar care and protection. So just by being a daughter, Anna and you are considered acceptable to God and you can enjoy his peculiar, which means unique or uncommon care and protection. So I really think God wants you to know that he cares for you. I feel that so intensely that he cares for you and that if he is committed to protecting you just because you are his daughter. Why does he do this? Because he knows how society treats women. Therefore, your double protection is that you are a woman and because such, he places emphasis on your care and protection, okay? We also know that who her natural father is. And the Bible is not just naming Anna's father for naming's sake. They tell us where he comes from. And this is so significant. Um, her father's name is Penuel, and it means the face of God. But she comes from the tribe of Asher. And if you don't know, the tribe of Asher was one of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? And they were known for oil production. They were known for oil production and olive oil during that time, similar to what we use it for today, um, was used in foods um, and was rich and flavorful. So trading it brought them wealth. So the tribe of Asher was wealthy. Actually, their name translates to blessed and prosperous. So Anna is a descendant and a lineage, right? That is blessed and prosperous. Um. We also know that she is old. <laughs> and, I've, and I thought this was funny. Whenever the Bible mentions someone as old or very old, I kind of chuckle because they want you to know that um, time was running out for them, right? Time was running out for them, but God, right? So we know she was old. Verse 36 says she was very old, which means that Anna persevered until her turn. Anna makes a cameo when she's old right? Anna's promise didn't come to pass when she was young, but she stayed faithful, right? She stayed faithful to God, though it seemed like it would never come to pass. This is for somebody who may be threatening to give up, for someone who may feel like, God, why isn't this coming to pass? I, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. It is going to happen. It is going to happen, but it's going to happen when the world is ready for it to happen. Not just you. You have to be ready. The season has to be ready to receive you. The people have to be ready. So God, God heard you on the first day when you prayed. He heard you on the first day. But there is a divine timing for everything to come to pass. So we see that Anna persevered until it was her turn, until God says, okay, right? But in the middle of her waiting for her, for her divine moment, what did Anna do? She enjoyed her life. Y'all, verse 36 said, she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. When I looked up, she had lived in the concordance. It means to enjoy life. So while Anna was waiting for her destiny moment with Jesus, she was enjoying her life. I know that sounds cliche because sometimes we focus on what we don't have. But he's like, no, in this season, you need to enjoy what you have in this season. Enjoy the life that you have in this season right? Do not slip into fantasy. Do not slip into vain imaginations. Do not project yourself into the future. You need to enjoy this season. God doesn't want us to put our lives on hold because what we're hoping for hasn't come to pass, right? I get it. I'm waiting on stuff too. But he wants us to take advantage of every opportunity that presents itself as you wait your turn. There are so many, your season, your current season is pregnant with opportunities for you to enjoy. But as long as you focus on what you don't have, as long as you focus on what's taking so long, as long as you focus on why I'm, I'm so unhappy with because I don't have this one thing, you're missing out on the beauty of your present season. And trust me, when people used to say that, when people used to say that to me, I'm like, y'all shut up. Because I'm not missing out on nothing because I want what I want. <laughs> but I'm still waiting. And Holy Spirit's like, every day, Brianna, seize the moment. 
Every moment you seize in this season is getting you one step closer to what you've been praying and asking me for. I need you to make the most out of this season. You need to wring it dry. Because how don't you know if you don't, if you get to that next season that you've been crying, spitting, and farting about, and you're still unhappy, you're like, I should have just did this in my previous season. He's like, live, live in the now, right? Live in the now. What are you delaying because you're mad about something that hasn't happened yet? Are you delaying happiness? Are you delaying joy? Are you delaying getting your body together if that's what you want to do? Are you delaying elevating your style? What are you delaying? You Because there's going to come a time, and we're going to see this in Anna's story, that she's going to have to get ready, stay ready. She's going to she gonna have to stay ready in order to seize the moment, right? So if you're struggling with enjoying your right now, let Anna mentor you into the future. Let Anna mentor you into the future. I always tell people, especially people who may not have mentors, right? I don't have a mentor. I don't have anyone walking through me. I'm kind of just, it's just me and the Holy Spirit. It's me and God journeying through this thing. And I've tried to look out for mentors and things like that. And, you know, it just never came to pass for me. And I would ask God, like, I really just want to do this right. I really want to do this right. But no one will mentor me. He's like, they're not going to because I'm not allowing them to. I want to mentor you. I want to show you the truth. I don't want you tainted by anything anyone else said, right? And so what he started to show me is, now let the people in the Bible mentor you. What season are you in? Okay, Brianna, I'm in a, I'm in an Abrahamic season, right? So I have to let Abraham mentor me. If you're in this season, in this season of waiting and struggling, whatever it is, and you're like trying to give up the ghost and, you know, you're weary, let Anna mentor you. Go find people in the Bible to mentor you because the Bible is the sure word of prophecy. The Bible is the wisdom that you need. So if God hasn't brought you someone to help you through, he wants to teach you. And he's giving you a book full of people to glean wisdom from, okay? So let Anna mentor you, as I said. As she was waiting on her destiny moment, Anna Anna was married for seven years and she focused on that, right? She was married for seven years and she focused on her marriage season, but maybe marriage is the thing you're desiring. I get it, me too. And it may not have just happened yet, right? But what are you deciding not to focus on that you have access to now? Yes, you want to be married. Yes, you may want to have a child, all the things. I get it. Woman desires. But what are you neglecting now? The Bible tells us that she was married for seven years. Now, we don't necessarily know what happened to her husband, but we know that she was married for seven years. So when she was in a season of marriage, she focused on that. Maybe you're in the season of building your career. Focus on that. Maybe you're in a school season. Focus on that. Maybe, I don't know what season you're in. Enter enter it into your mind and agree to focus on that. Okay? So she focused on her marriage um, because in her next season, the Bible mentions that she was a widow. So what if what if Anna didn't focus on her marriage? What if Anna didn't decide to enjoy her life and live her life in her marriage? Because her next season, seven years later, she was a widow. And she would have missed out on the beauty of that previous season because she's like, I need the big promise to come. I'm not going to be happy until the big promise comes. No, no. The Bible tells us that she was a widow until 84. I'm not sure if that means that she remarried after 84 or died. I don't know. But I do know that she had to endure a season of widowhood too. She had to endure hardship. She had to endure hardship too. Being a widow during those times, if you weren't, if you were unmarried or didn't have children, you basically in biblical times was considered worthless, right? So much were tied to those identities. But we know that Anna had to go through a season of suffering until 84. I'm not sure what that meant, but we do know. So ultimately, I'm trying to reiterate that we have to be intentional about maximizing every season, even the hard ones. And since Anna was a widow and had nothing else occupying her time, she could dedicate herself to to, uh, God's desire. Now, I know that's cliche. I know we don't want to hear that. You single, 
that you got all the time to spend with the Lord. I, the Lord don't keep, ma'am, the Lord don't keep me. He don't keep me warm at night. I don't want to focus on the Lord's desires, right? I, co I, I roll over in a cold spot every night. I don't want that. But it's true. It's true, right? Anna, God had the plan for Anna to focus on his desires for her. And it just so happens that his desires for her were in the temple. That doesn't mean that that's his desires for you. Maybe his desires for you are to focus on building a podcast, focus on writing a book, Focus on getting your money together to start creating generational wealth. What is the thing that God is giving you the grace to focus on right now? Because he knows in the next season, you're not going to be able to focus on it. You don't know what's awaiting you in the next season that you're romanticizing. So it would behoove everybody to maximize the current season. So verse 37 tells us that she never left the temple. When I looked up, never left, because I'm just thinking she she just never went out, exited the temple. But when I looked up, never left um, in the Greek, it meant she didn't fall away or she didn't become faithless. So even though she was doing what God asked her to do in preparation for Jesus, she still had placed an opportunity to fall away and become faithless. Because you know that weight, <laughs> it threatened to take us out every time. When, you're wait, when we are waiting on God to bring his promises to pass, it is normal to experience we uh, weariness and fatigue. It's easy to step into faithlessness and begin to confess stuff like, I don't want it or it's not worth it. Um, but Anna shows us what it means to not give up on a promise, right? Don't, and, and this is something, this is not in the text, but this is something that I've been talking a lot about on my YouTube channel. Y'all, I don't know what season we just stepped into. Well, I do know, but God has really been talking to me a lot about words. And it could be because we may be gearing up for the Let There Be Challenge again, but he has really been talking to me about words, watching your words, especially in this season. Don't allow your frustration to cause you to cancel out what's supposed to come in this season. So when we're mad, we're like, I don't want that anyway, or it ain't worth it. If you say those things, you will have what you say because you're that powerful because he gave you dominion in Genesis one, and he gave you a body to, to move in that dominion in Genesis two. So in this season, because there is an open door, you will have what you say because the door swings both ways. So you can either use your words to agree with God and decree and declare and step in the open door, or you can use your words to talk against God and close the door because you have that authority. That's not in my notes. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about here, uh, what kind of does, but I just wanted to issue that warning um, because I know hell likes to work on people and get them to confess things that are contrary to the word of God and the devil is a liar. We're stepping into these doors this year. Okay. All right. So the Bible tells us that uh, she didn't leave the temple. Now, I thought the temple was just the church kind of, right? Where they worship. No, when I looked up temple, it meant uh, with respect to the temple at Jerusalem. So the place of worship, but it was also the courts and other buildings. So it wasn't just the temple, the, the worship place. It was also legislative buildings and courts. So Anna wasn't just praying and fasting because it says, you know, she was worshiping, she was praying and fasting. She wasn't just doing those things. She also had access to the courts and other buildings. So people who were making decisions about life during those times, they knew Anna. She never left. She was always there. She And because they also knew she was a prophetess, right? They may have come to her for advice on cases, on legislation, so we can we know that Anna was influencing government. She never left the temple because she was influencing government. People who make decisions. So yes, she was taking care of the spiritual stuff, but she was also enacting, helping enact laws, right? Because she never left. That's what she dedicated herself to. I say all that to say that she didn't let her waiting season go to waste. Yes, yeah, she was a widow. Yes, she was still waiting on the Messiah, 
but she was still moving in influence. You have the capability to still move in influence, even if you're waiting, even if it hasn't happened for you yet, you still have a level of influence that you're able to move into. And it will behoove you to use that, ben that, that, that influence that God has given you in this season to influence the next season. Do not let your influence die. And I don't care if you only think, you know, you got influence over your cat. You better talk to that cat and influence that cat. Your children, you have influence. God has given everyone a measure of influence. But it's only the people who nurture that influence that grow, that go forward, that go forward. Don't let timidity steal you out of it. I mean, cheat you out of this. You are influential. And even though you may not have a microphone, you still do have a microphone because sometimes you will be the only person speaking life into somebody, influencing someone's decisions. Sometimes you will. Don't let that go to waste, okay? What, what, what else what do we know? We know that, of course, she practiced spiritual disciplines. In verse 37, it says she worshiped fast and prayed. And that just is to remind us that your spiritual disciplines will sustain you. I know we get tired of doing them. I know we don't enjoy the sacrifice of fasting and praying and worshiping. I get it. But those are the things that will ultimately sustain you. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. We also know um, the regulatory way in which she practiced them, right? So she was praying, worshiping, fasting day and night. And when I looked up night, because I'm like, is something going to be deep here? When I looked up night, the fact that she did it day and night, it's night means, according to your concordance, the time when the weary and also the drunken give themselves over to slumber. So when everyone else was weary and giving up, Anna wasn't. Anna wasn't. Anna was remaining diligent. Anna was staying disciplined. And this is something you have to do because I know we let our guards down at night. We tired. We have been doing all the things, right? You're going to have to be a little bit more disciplined even at night because you're tired. You're weary. Stay on guard. Pay attention. Why? Why did Anna stay disciplined? Because she didn't know when her big moment of destiny was going to happen. You don't even know. You don't even know when what you're praying for will come to pass. So it would be kind of immature, wouldn't it, to not be prepared for it when it finally shows up. It would kind of be a little immature because you've been praying this whole time. You've been crying and begging God to bring it to pass. And when he finally, what if he brings it to pass tomorrow? Are you ready? Tomorrow, you wake up in the morning. Here's that thing that I promise you. Are you ready? You have to stay ready, y'all. Things are happening quickly. Y'all see how fast this year is heading now, right? Um, September just got it to go play and left back out of the driveway. Uh, but you got to stay ready. Let Anna mentor you in staying ready. Verse 38 says, coming up to them at that very moment. So this is how we know that Anna stayed ready. We have Mary and Joseph in the temple, right? They're going to dedicate Jesus. They're doing the, um, the, the, the normal religious things that they do in the temple for children. And in that very moment, Anna came up to them. This is verse 38, coming up to them at that very moment. That's the NIV, but the KJV says, and she coming in that instant, in that instant. This lets us know that Anna didn't have time to get ready. She came up to them in that instant. She had to already be walking so closely with God that when she saw them, she, she would be able to recognize them immediately. She had to be able to recognize the promise immediately. Immediately. Sometimes y'all, and I get it. Sometimes the promise show up and it don't look like what you asked for, what you prayed for. But what if it shows up in a different way than you had in your mind? Would you be able to recognize it or would you pass on the promise that you say you've been waiting for? Would you pass on it because you missed it, because you weren't perceptive enough? That's what you're praying, your fasting and your worshiping is for. So that you could, you will recognize it the instant that it shows up immediately without delay. 
You won't have to second guess. You won't have to say, okay, well, let me go and pray and fast and see if this is really it. No, you, you should have been praying and fasting, girl. Time is of the essence. Either you're going to pee or you're getting off this pot. What you going to do, right? In that instant, Anna knew the Messiah. She didn't have to ask. She already knew when she laid eyes on him. Yep, that's the one right there. Her relationship with God, her development over all this time allowed her to actually step into that destiny moment. So not only was she prepared to recognize what she had been waiting on, right? Because she had been waiting and contending for the Messiah to come. Not only was she prepared to recognize it, but she was also prepared to provide insight for others. How do we know this? Well, the Bible tells us that she gave thanks. She first gave thanks. After she came up to them in that instant, she first gave thanks. And that meant to acknowledge the presence of God. Secondly, it tells us that she spoke publicly about Jesus and his intended future. She was a prophetess. She was operating in her calling. Everything that God had allowed her to do up until this moment, it wasn't just for no reason. It was very intentional. She was able to prophesy and publicly talk about what Jesus, who Jesus was and give his intended purpose because her gifting already worked. She had already sharpened the gift. Have you sharpened the gifts that God gave you? Or are you sitting on them? Are they lying dormant? And when heaven calls your name and says, hey, it's time for you, are you going to say, no, I'm not ready? And then allow history to forget you. One of my favorite quotes is by Winston Churchill. This is what keeps me going. Um, he says, history will be kind to me because I intend to write it. I decree and declare that history will not forget you. That the world will remember your name. Just like the Bible says in the days of Noah, the Bible, would, people will, who read about you in history, they'll say in the days of whatever your name was. In the, in the days of whoever your name, whatever your name is, they're gonna say something. This happened when she was alive. History will not forget you, Okay. Number three, she gave insight and perspective to those who were listening. How do I know this? Verse 38 tells us that those listening to Anna are also those who were looking for redemption in Jerusalem. So they're looking for the same thing. They're in there contending and asking for redemption in Jer Jerusalem, but they didn't even recognize that the redemption had come. They wasn't perceptive enough to realize that redemption had arrived right? Which is why Anna's role was so significant. What does redemption mean? It means a ransoming. It means deliverance. That's what it means. So this means that they were seeking, they were praying, they were asking, but when the answer showed up, they weren't perceptive of it. They didn't know. It looked regular. It didn't look like the answer. Father, open up our eyes so that we may see, open up our ears so that we may hear and understand when the promise shows up because they were looking and still did not see. Are you looking and still not seeing? If you are and you feel blind, ask God to show you what you're not seeing because there's so many opportunities that are in front of us right now that are going to lead to the thing that we need, but we can't, we don't see the opportunities. We are looking at them, but we don't see their significance. So we're, we're passing them by every day. Ask God to show you every opportunity that awaits you. Everything that will help you maximize this season, right? Because you're not only going to provide perspective and awareness for yourself, you're also going to do it for the people who are also seeking similar answers. These folks were also in the temple praying and asking for redemption, but they still didn't know. And again, was needed to give them the revelation so that they wouldn't miss the divine timing so that they would know where to go and who to look for and to know that Jesus had come in their time, in their lifetime, right? It's not just for you. It's just not about you. It's for other people too, other people connected to you. And I know it feels personal and I know it hurts and I know you have to make another decision. 
But in this season, y'all, <laughs> in this season, what if you are one decision away? What if this last thing that God has been asking from you, asking of you, what if it's the last thing you have to give in order to step into the door? Because remember, as I said, we're in 5784. It's an open door. Doesn't mean that you're going to walk in it. You get to choose. If you're going to obey God, if you're going to, you know, practice long suffering, if you're going to suffer like a good soldier, I know we ain't, on, we ain't on the battlefield, but you know what I mean. You get to choose if you're going to do what is required of you. This last thing, how don't you know that this last thing isn't the thing that's going to take you over? You don't know. You don't know. Right? I feel that so strongly, y'all. Make the decision, agree with God again, quickly. We don't have time in this season to just be parlaying, kiki, and we don't. Doors are open and the prepared will walk through just like Anna. She was prepared, just like the virgin. Some were, you know, prepared, some weren't. The ones that weren't, they in trouble. Stay prepared. If you're struggling to stay prepared, let Anna mentor you. And that is all I have for y'all tonight. That is all I have. I hope this has encouraged you. 